we've been on a long quest to update the 1990s technology here at the Biosphere 2 Ocean to really try to test solutions for coral reef resilience under climate change. So we're sitting here on the pier of, of the B2 Ocean. So behind me you can see what is the historical ocean mesocosm. And so one of the things that you'll see behind me is a series of string over the ocean. And this marks where we're gonna add lights over the ocean. And this is really critical because corals live with a symbiotic algae. So an algae that like plants on Earth, they are giving the coral a large amount of their energy. So they're harvesting the energy from the sun, allowing the coral to not have to feed as much as other animals like corals would have to do. But because of that, they need light. Uh, and unfortunately, the glass of the Biosphere 2 ocean actually removes a lot of the key light that they need to photosynthesize. And so we know we have to supplement that light. So we've been working hard over the last few years to figure out how much light we need, uh, the type of light we need, so doing how much ultraviolet radiation do we need versus how much visible light do the corals need, and really try to optimize the number and placement and type of light over the Biosphere 2 ocean. And so we're excited to report that we finally figured out the right combination of numbers and type of light to give the corals that Goldilocks uh, amount of light. So the long-term plan is to really, like I said, test these solutions that our colleagues from all over the world have developed to try to increase corals' resistance to climate change. So as the climate is changing, oceans are becoming warmer. Uh, and that stresses the corals in a number of ways. Um, and most critically, it stresses that symbiotic algae that lives in their tissue, along with the coral, what we call host, the animal that, that, that holds those algae. And what happens in those cases is actually they, they expel the algae in a process that's known as coral bleaching because it leaves behind the white skeleton that lives underneath the tissues. And so we really need to understand how uh, ocean warming and other climate changes, for example, ocean acidification, are combining to cause really uh, stressful conditions on the reef.